Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Walt here from Down the Block Sports, and today I want to talk about the Boston Celtics. Yes, they've made a ton of moves already this offseason within the coaching staff and the front office, and it looks like one of their starters could be on his way out the door. According to reports, it looks like a breakup is coming between Kemba Walker and the Boston Celtics. So today I want to talk about five teams who should trade for the former all-star point guard. Again, I'm Alec Walt. This is Down the Block Sports. And today I'm talking about five teams who should trade for Kemba Walker. The fifth team is a team in the Celtics division, and that's the Toronto Raptors. The Raptors are a team that had a very bad season last year. Their best player, Kyle Lowry's likely on his way out the door. And it's kind of a weird time right now for the Raptors because they were previously won an NBA championship. Of course, losing Kawhi Leonard and a couple other pieces, they are just not the same team. They had to play in Florida last year. They couldn't even play in their home basketball court. And if they lose Lowry and maybe there's still some issues at the border, who's going to want to play for the Raptors next year? The Raptors really want to improve. I think they need to be aggressive on the trade market. And I think going after someone like Kemba would make a lot of sense. He's a starting caliber point guard. You have a a decent roster already with guys like Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, uh, Chris Boucher, and OG Anunobi really took steps in their game last year. I think they can afford someone like Kemba Walker. Kemba would fit in uh, very well as their starting point guard. And, you know, they have a team that can be pretty decent if he's there. Now, obviously, ho- hopefully we can see them play in Toronto next year and the fans can can see this Raptors basketball team again. But, you know, in the NBA, where you play matters. And if there is a concern or you're not playing in front of fans yet or there's things like that, who, who's going to want to sign with the Raptors? So I think if the Raptors are going to be aggressive, they're going to have to do it through trade. I think Kimba Walker is a very realistic free uh, option for them. And I, I think he'd be a pretty good fit uh, on that team. Again, they can afford him. The Celtics could take someone like Rodney Hood, who's makes who's going to be making over $10 million next year in return to help salary-wise. Um, they have a team option on Aaron Baines. I'm not exactly sure if they're going to pick that up, but uh, there's definitely some pieces there they, they can make in return. Watch out for the Raptors. Again, at low, lower on my, on my list here, but still a team that could be interesting in the mix for a guy like Kemba Walker. Number four, I'm going to go with the New Orleans Pelicans. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not sold that Lonzo Ball is returning. Uh, to New Orleans. I think he's likely going to sign with another team that leaves a hole at the point guard position on a team that really needs to start turning it around. Uh, Zion Williamson, the former number one pick a couple years ago, one of the biggest names in the NBA when he got drafted. He hasn't played in the playoffs yet. And, and I think it's ridiculous. You know, there was an expanded playoffs this year, and the Pelicans still couldn't make it in the Western Conference. Now, yes, the West is deep. You know, there's a lot of that, that's going on, but um, I, they're going to have an opening at point guard. It's very clear that Steven Adams and um, Eric Bledsoe really didn't fit in last year. They had two of their worst seasons in years, some in their career. So, you know, I think the Pelicans should be interested in a guy like Kemba Walker on the trade bank market. I think Kemba would fit in a lot better on a team like the New Orleans Pelicans, and the Celtics would have to take someone like Adams or Bledsoe in return. Now, obviously, the Celtics would prefer Adams. I think the Pelicans would re- prefer Bledsoe just because of what position Kemba plays. But, you know, those two have two years left remaining on their contracts. One's worth 19, the other one's is worth closer to 17. But, you know, the Pelicans got to start playing relevant basketball. I mean, you got a guy like Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, two of the better young stars in the NBA, and they're playing on a team that you almost forget they're in the league. You know, they're not playing relevant playoff games. They're not getting the national team. And I guess they're not going to get that TV spotlight when they're playing in a place like New Orleans compared to a place like Los Angeles or New York. But we need these star players playing more relevant basketball. I think Kemba makes them better. I'm not sold Lonzo Ball returns, and I also don't think they should pay Lonzo Ball. Why why should they continue to keep this roster together if they're not going to go anywhere? So I think Kemba would be an upgrade. I think losing one of those two veterans would also be nice. I think the Southeast could use both of them well, especially someone like Stephen Adams when they could use, you know, some better options there in the paint. But uh, New Orleans has to do something with the Zion Williams and Brandon Ingram duo. Or sooner or later, I'm going to be making a video called Five Teams That Should Trade for Brandon Ingram, or hopefully not in a couple years. 
with the case for Zion Williamson. So uh, watch out for the Pelicans. They need a point guard. They need a veteran. They need someone who makes their team better. I think Kemba can do that, and I think he's a better fit in New Orleans than he is with the Boston Celtics. And number three, this is a team that no one talks about and I think is absolutely primed to make a move. And that's the Detroit Pistons. What? The Detroit Pistons, yes, they're, they're not a very good team. I get it. But they have millions of dollars in cap space. Dwayne Casey's a very good head coach, and their backcourt's not very good. You know, they drafted three rookies in the first round last year. The first one they took in Killian Hayes was their worst. And he's a rookie. He didn't have a very good year last year. Yes, is there some bounce-back potential? There is. But for a team that's desperate for a starting point guard, for a team that – um has some solid young pieces. Jeremy Grant had a good year last year. Sadiq Bey, who I was in love with throughout the entire draft process, looked very solid. Isaiah Stewart is going to take the starting center spot for a couple of seasons. They need a point guard. They need a guard. Period. They, They really don't have much. So for a team that has an unbelievable amount of cap space, um, for a team that's desperate for a starting point guard, for a team that could, could, uh, they're basically buying low on Kemba Walker and he averaged nearly 20 points per game last year. And, and I think that'd make a lot of sense for a team and take a lot of pressure off of Kemba. He, he'd basically be the the main, he'd be the main guy on that team. So, and you know, you notice a guy like Dwayne Casey in his time is in Toronto. It seemed like every guard he worked with fit in and did well. I, I think it'd be a good spot for Kemba to begin with. So, Watch out for Detroit. They have a ton of cap space. I think they're going to get someone. They're going to spend some money here. And uh, don't be surprised if someone they go after on the buy low side is a point guard like Kemba Walker. Number two, I'm going to go to the Dallas Mavericks. And I think what happened this postseason is a massive concern for them with Chris Stapp's Porzingis. He was, you know, invisible for stretches here. In the postseason, he played in all seven games against the Clippers. Of course, the Clippers advanced and the Mavericks didn't when they had a lead there on the series. They had a 2 0 series lead, a 3 2 series lead, and still didn't advance in the seven game series against the Clippers. Um, Porzingis uh, averaged 13 and 5 when he averaged 20 and 9 in the regular season. He failed to score in double digits in games 3, 5, and 6. Now, remember, I said they were up 2 0. Okay, so next game's game three. They were up three. They were up three two. The next game was game six. And in those two games, you got very, very little from Chris Stapps Porzingis. And this guy's making over $30 million a season. He was 0 for 5 from three point line in game seven. And he shot 29% from three in this series when he shot over 40% in the regular season. He also missed 40% of the regular season. And this team was still one of the higher seeds in the Eastern Conference or Western Conference. Yes, they're kind of overblowing the role. But that's a massive concern if you're the Dallas Mavericks. You have a young star like Luka Doncic who's getting better every single year, who's making it into the playoffs, having unbelievable playoff series, and his co-star, who's making north of $30 million a year, is basically invisible in the most important games of the series? They got to do better for for Luka Doncic. They need a star who's going to step up in the playoffs. They need a star who's not going to miss 40% of the season on a consistent basis. Now, you're probably listening to the Celtics fan, like, why would you want this guy? I think his role is exactly what the Celtics need. He's tall. He can score. He can shoot. He can rebound. He can play the four and the five. Injuries are a massive concern, yes, but Kemba Walker missed a ton of time last year as well. But Kemba Walker doesn't have as large of an injury history as Porzingis does. Now, there'd have to be some other pieces involved in the deal, I know. But Kemba Walker is a point guard. He takes some of the playmaking pressure off of playmaking and scoring pressure off of Luka Doncic. He'd have to play a little bit more off the ball than I think Kemba is comfortable with. But I think Rick Carlisle would fit him better in the offense than Brad Stevens would. But now, obviously, with Kemba, there's only two years left on his contract. He does have a player option at the end of next season. Again, he'd have to figure out how to play a little bit more off ball. I think they would get him more involved in the offense than Tatum and Brown did. I think the ball movement on the Celtics last year was flat out pathetic. And I think it's way more efficient there on the Mavericks. So 
Uh, watch out for them. Again, it wouldn't be a one-for-one -one swap. They'd have to get a little bit more creative. But I think Porzingis is exactly what Dallas need, or Boston needs. I think someone like him is exactly what Dallas needs. Now, number one, I'm going with the Chicago Bulls. Now, they're in the final year of Zach Levine's contract. This is a team that hasn't won with him. This is a team that, in an expanded playoffs, still couldn't make the playoffs. And they are, give them credit, they are doing things they can to build a competitive roster for next year. Now, at the trade deadline last year, they acquired Nikola Vucevic, who is an all-star center, 20-11 and 11 type guy. So he does have some better talent around him. They drafted Patrick Williams in the draft last year, who's an up-and-coming two-way forward, I think has some pretty nice potential. They still are a few pieces away. Now, they have Kobe White, who's young guard, a couple of veterans on some brutal contracts. You know, I think if they went after another scorer, um, it would make a ton of sense. Now, for the Celtics or for a trade perspective, Thad, Thad Young, Al Farouk Aminu, Thomas Sedaransky, Kobe White are probably the guys that they would look at. Of course, it'd be a couple expiring contracts and a young player. But um, the Bulls can't lose Levine. And if they don't make the playoffs this year, they have a very, very strong case of that happening. And you look at Eastern Conference, it's it's not bad. Philly, competitive. Milwaukee, Brooklyn, Miami, Atlanta. New York's getting better and has money to spend. Charlotte, when they get LaMilla Ball back, will be competitive. Boston will still compete for a playoff spot. Indiana, when they get fully healthy, will be better. No, this is no cakewalk in the East. You know, can this Bulls team right now make it interesting? Yeah, but I don't think making it interesting is what's going to keep Zach Levine in Chicago. I think they need to build a much better team. They they do. They need one more player this year. So you got to give credit to the Bulls. They are at least making an effort to keep Zach Levine happy, but they need one more guy, and I think Kemba's a very realistic guy. Now, they can be interesting in free agency. I do think some of the contracts on their team with Young, Arino, and Sanaransky all making over $10 million makes it a little bit tougher to be too aggressive. But um, I think they're, they are in a great spot to be active in the trade market, and I think they'd be a great landing spot for a point guard like Kemba Walker. That's going to be it for this episode of who I think should trade for Kemba Walker. Who do you think should trade for the former all-star point guard? Feel free to comment that below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Down the Block Sports for more of my exclusive content. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in, and we'll see you very soon.